All right, let's go ahead and solve this one, and then we'll graph it. So nothing unusual here. We're just going to split this up. I got 5 minus 9x over 8 is less than or equal to, and this is just comparing the positive value. Uh, but then we're also going to compare the negative value, so 5 minus 9x over 8, and this is compared to negative 5 thirds. And since we're comparing it to the negative, we're going to flip the inequality there. Yes, I'm going to point that out. If you wanted to, with that inequality, you could get rid of the any, well, the absolute value rather, <clears throat> and then you'd make that e uh, greater than or equal to a negative five thirds, like this. Um, I try to avoid that just because sometimes we get confused with which way it should go, and if we keep keep in mind that the negative is just going to flip the inequality, eh, we're still in good shape. So whatever works best for you is, is fine. Uh, on this one, well, we could find common denominators. I don't know if it's necessary. All right, so let's multiply both sides by 8. And then we got a 5 minus 9x less than or equal to 40 thirds. <clears throat> and now... I'm going to have to add 5 to both sides. But 5 with the denominator of 3 would be 15 thirds. Can I just subtract yeah, you know, I'm trying, man. Yeah, thank you. It's a <laughs> minus 15 thirds, and I still have that negative 9x <clears throat> less than or equal to. Uh, I've got common denominators there, so that's not a big deal. That would give us a 25 thirds. And then finally, we would divide both sides by negative 9. Does everyone remember how to divide mm -hmm. with fractions? Yeah, so that's we'll make that a fraction. Very good. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So x equals... I can reciprocate that here and then multiply. Multiply by 1 over, nope, negative 9 over 1. That was a good save. So this is a negative. Wait a second. No, that's what it was, right? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, so I need to. The negative 9 is in the denominator. Something seemed off there. Okay. Well, we have a negative answer because we have only one negative. So I got 25 over 27, that's a negative. Thanks for pointing that out. Yep, we do need to flip the inequality because we divided both sides by a negative. Yes. So on the purple one, if we wanted common denominators, I'd have to multiply this one by 3, both of these by 3. So I need parentheses there. And I would multiply both of these by 8 giving me a common denominator of 24. That cancels those out, and I'm combining steps here just to save time. 3 times 5 is 15, minus 27, uh, 3 times 9 is 27x. This is greater than or equal to a negative, 5 times 8 is 40. We have a common denominator, so we can ignore those. Now, if I can do this right this time, I would subtract 15 from both sides, giving me negative 27x is greater than or equal to negative 55. And when I divide both sides by negative 27, that again is going to flip the inequality comparing to x. 55, no, it won't go into 3 or 9, so that just gives us a positive 55. 27. Now that we have those two, we can graph them. So I've got a negative 25 27 here. And we'll just put 55 27 on this side. And with that, uh, this one, I guess we'll do it in blue. That one's eating the x, and it's equal to, so we got a bracket. This one's going to the right. Uh, on this other one, which we'll do in purple, 
This one, it's not eating the x, so it goes to the left. It's also equal to, so we have uh, square brackets, and it's just the intersection of these two. Now what does this really mean though? It means that it doesn't matter what values we plugged into the inequality, of course back when it had the absolute value, uh, whatever, anything inside that range or interval would give us a true statement for the inequality. This is the interval which we would have gotten from the graph. So.